when Wanza came in this morning, I saw her and I told her I quickly remembered I left this in the car. I meant to bring it in. Maybe some of you recognize it. Mm -hmm. Ken used to wear it in the pulpit. He wore it during his funeral. After his funeral, Wanza folded it and gave it to me. And she said, I want you to wear this always. I could not step into this pulpit without putting it on Wanza. And thinking of her husband. And to thinking of those who come to minister and shepherd and be pastors here at Red Cruz with us this morning. And I'm grateful for his invitation to be here with you. I marvel at the fact that the last time I was here preaching from this pulpit, I think you had just lost your Lord. And I was amazed by the fact that you were here so shortly after. And I said, what a tribute that is, not just to the daughter, but to a man's faith in God to be in sacred space and to be in a prayerful time in such a loss. I lost my sister just a month ago from a long battle with her cancer. Jose, I appreciate the card from the church and other well wishes that were sent my way in remembering her. And then you came in this morning and I was told you were just recently released from some surgery. It's an amazing man, amazing witness. I lift that up to you, that just in a few weeks, what was going on with your life and your needs, and your stress, and your emotions, and your physical healing, that you're here worshiping with us today because you want to be in a place to give God thanks. Um, uh, the reason um, this is so important to me as an image in this story from Luke, it really hits home that one came back, only one in this story of 10 came back, a leper healed to give thanks, falling at Jesus' feet and honoring him, thanking him, and just pouring out his grateful heart. Only one came back. When God heals, when God forgives, when God changes a life, or even when God interrupts a life to realign it and set it on the right path, this is a time of healing and renewal for each of us. And we come Sunday after Sunday to offer him praise and thanks. We choose to be here at home in prayer and fellowship with one another and in the um, presence of, of Christ's welcoming spirit to have us feel his embracing arms as we come to give that thanks and uh, to worship him. Healing, you know it, most of us know this very well, that healing creates a thirst to express gratitude. And in my devotional readings over these past weeks, when God interrupts our life by Greg Barnes, he hit me right between the eyes in what this story is revealing to me as um, these lepers um, are standing by when Jesus is in this Samaritan area. And, um, and they call out to him to uh, have mercy, help him. And uh, Jesus says, go to the priests. Um, and on their way, uh, there they are healed. One comes back to offer thanks. And uh, Greg Barnes, uh, let me just lay this out for you, what he says, it's very helpful. Healing creates a thirst to express gratitude and love toward God. Every time I pray for someone to be healed, I get more and more thankful. That is not because I know God will make the sick healthy. It is not so, uh, it, it is just so good to know that I and these broken parishioners, he's a minister, I love so much are all in the hands of our God. Those are such good and caring hands. I know he will heal. He may not make us healthy, but I know he will heal the sick soul and the despairing heart. It is such an amazing grace to be placed in God's hands. 
that if we really knew the value of it, we would not be so anxious about getting better. Most Christians seem to have certain passages of Scripture that hound them most of their lives. For me, one such passage comes from the words of the psalmist who asks, What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty to me? That's in Psalm 116. I keep thinking about all the Lord's grace that I have received. All of the people God brought into my life when I was about to slip through the rocks, slip through the cracks, my family, my church, my health, so many incredible friends, the new day. There were no guarantees that I would have any of that. They certainly did not come to me because I deserved them. They have come only as the bounty of God's grace. Like everyone who goes through life with open eyes, I am painfully aware of my many abandonments I have experienced along the way. In all honesty, I am not particularly thankful for those painful losses. Those who suffer through the loss of their health are not happy about their broken body. Any more than widows are happy about the loss of their husbands. Or bankrupt business people are happy about the loss of their success. The reason people who have lost their lives are grateful is that they have been found by the Savior. He has given them a new life. It may not look all that different from the life they had before, but for them, everything, everything is different. Even the morning sunrise is received as a precious gift that can overwhelm them with thankfulness. Gratitude may be the ultimate vocation of the Christian. We engage in whatever mission the Lord has given us, not because we must, but because we may. People who are thankful for all the grace they have received want more than anything to give gifts. But we have to lose a great deal of life before we discover that the purpose of life is to give it away to things that if we are grateful, we cannot help but live our lives as a witness to God's salvation. If we are not grateful, no matter how hard we try, we can never have a Christian vocation. That's because Christians discover their mission only as a response to being in love with the grace of God. That's a powerful, transforming statement to understand. It is what gives me clarity and understanding and um, a reason to get into this scripture from Luke of why only one returned. Because the need to give thanks to the one whose love was so promised and given and shared to him, just surfaced all the gratitude that he could express through his healed living. That's what happened to the leper who was healed. Just an ordinary human being need healing and grace. He decided to live a life of gratitude and he turned around before he even went before the priests. He went to the Savior first. Gratitude. Ordinary people appeal to leper. Ordinary people are some of the saints. I, I had a friend, um, um, Len Sweet is his, is his name, a major theologian in the United Methodist Church and president of Central Seminaries. When he used to come to my congregation in New York to preach, 
uh, he would uh, get up into the pulpit and the first thing he would say uh, to the congregation was uh, with a loud, robust, resonating voice, he would open his arms to embrace the congregation and he says, Welcome, saints! And then and they would all say back to him, Welcome to the land. And then he would follow it by saying, Welcome, sinners! And it was a muted response. People didn't know how to deal with that fact. That we were ordinary people in need of mercy and grace and healing and love, forgiving love. I love the song, I sing the song, Saints of God. I sing the song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. One was a doctor, one was a queen, one was the shepherdess on the green. They were all of them saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. Me, ordinary person, you, hoping to be one too. They loved their Lord so dear, so dear, and his love made them strong, and they followed the right of Jesus' sake the whole of their good lives long. One was a soldier, one was a priest, and one was slain by a fierce wild beast. And there's not any reason, no, not the least, why I should be one too. You are. Saints. You are. Sinners. They lived not only in ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school, on the street, in the store, in church, by the sea, in the house next door. They are saints of God, whether rich or poor, and I mean to be one too. That leper who turned around and went back to get on his knees in front of Jesus meant to be one too. Because the gratitude he felt of being healed and loved and forgiven and made clean and whole and right and put on a path. He wanted to follow Jesus. He wanted to surrender his life to Jesus. Jesus was a bit dismayed upon his return. Weren't there others? Weren't there nine more? Where, where are they? What do we do with our gratitude, the sinners that we are? Oh, I love the way uh, Donald Shelby um, wrote it about people like you and me, who are just ordinary people living uh, a life of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for giving us life and using our life. This is interesting. Listen to this about you and me. We are asked to be what we are not. We who follow Christ are called to offer to others what is still unrealized in us. Lessons of love and life are to be taught by us who are still learning them. Self-understanding in others is to be encouraged by us who do not yet understand ourselves. We are to witness, nurture, and admonish others in their spiritual pilgrimage while still struggling with our own. It's powerful. We who are sick are asked to heal others. We who are fractious and cause conflict are called by Christ to be peacemakers. We who have dark corners and are so still unredeemed are sent out to baptize. We who need the word ourselves are commissioned to proclaim and to preach. We who are possessed by irrational urges and baser motives are sent out to cast out demons. We are called by Jesus to do what we need, to offer what we ourselves need, desperately. That's the grace of God using ordinary saints like you and me to heal our life, to set it anew, free, in a direction to follow Him. Follow, I need Thee every hour, O oh, gracious Lord. We sing it, I need, I need You. 
I want to give my total self. I want to surrender all to you. This is what gratitude does. It comes back to God. Just plain ordinary me comes back to Jesus' feet. And I bring all my imperfections healed by his love and his mercy and his grace. Express my grateful, thankful heart to him. A saint is never consciously a saint. Listen to that. A saint is never consciously a saint. A saint is consciously dependent on God. Oswald Chambers said that. And one great woman, Corrie Tin Boom, in her book, The Hiding Place, said, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to bring your life to him and kneel before him and trust him with your unknown future. He has forgiven you, loved you, healed you, made you new. Don't ever hesitate, be afraid, to trust the unknown future to this known God. The one leper decided to do that. And in bringing my message to a place where he was able to take the yoke of Christ upon him, healed, restored, forgiven, and to trust in him so much that he had to get back to the one who did this for him and give him thanks. Hear these words, Psalm 119, and think of gratitude. Oh, how I love you, O God. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long, I'll follow it. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. Your love is always with me. I'm grateful, I'm thankful that I know this is true. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. I give thanks to you for teaching me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They're, they're sweeter. They're sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I want to turn from it. I want to come to you. I want to be with you. I want to follow you. I want to walk with you. I want to live with you. I want to give my life to you. I want to surrender to you. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I'm severely afflicted, the letter said. Give me life, O oh God. Help me. According to your word, love me. Accept my offerings of praise, of gratitude, O oh Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your hand. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. I will follow them all of my life. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever, forever, to the end. 
This is a man who came back to give God thanks and surrender his life. Let me play this song for you. You should know the words for it.
who returned to Jesus and surrendered his life to him with a thankful, grateful heart. Blessings to all of you.